A very good afternoon and welcome back to Fort Kent for the final day of action in the eighth round of the Biathlon World Cups for this season. Nine rounds of World Cups plus the World Championships to count for the points. So still a long way to go as far as uh, amassing World Cup points is concerned. But uh, as I say, this is the last day and another bitterly cold day here in Fort Kent. Minus 20 when the, the team started arriving a few hours ago, but it is warming up with the sun. That's good news. Up to minus 18 officially. There are parts of the course a lot warmer than that and uh, down in the hollows it's a lot colder than that so uh, it is going to be one where they're well wrapped up I don't think we'll see too many bare hands today the mass starts on the card today and uh, essentially the best 30 on form we've got the top 25 who want to race from the World Cup standings plus the five best form performers from this round of the World Cup so far there's the number one for the season Terry Yabo young Norwegian who has excelled so far this year his main rival in the World Cup race Emil Hegler Svensson, the defending champion from last year. Those two going head to head again. And Martin Foucard leading the, the uh, Mass Start World Cup standings. So a big day for him. He'll be wearing bib number three. And uh, his brother, incidentally, deciding not to race. Carl Johan Bergman, what a great run of form he's on. Shooting 20 out of 20 yesterday in the pursuit race. If he can do that again today, you can almost guarantee that someone with his skiing ability will be on the podium. Well, this man could win if he hits 20 out of 20, but he's shown no signs of that sort of shooting form so far this year. Well, here's the start list, and if you printed one out from the IBU site uh, earlier on today, an hour and a half, two hours ago, uh, there have been quite a few changes. Sherazov Ada, in particular, making late withdrawals, so all the numbers have changed. Keep an eye out for that. And there are also uh, a number of other high-profile absentees from today's race. Uh, Oleana Bjorndalen, who you'll know, hasn't made the trip to the USA. He's uh, training back at home in Italy for the World Championships. Pfeiffer and Grice, who were competing in Preskill, have decided not to race yesterday or today. They've uh, headed back to Germany. Landertinger of Austria, of course, the world champion isn't here. Ustigov, the Olympic champion of Russia, is not here. But the top four in the World Cup standings are here. Bo, Svensson, Fokada and Sherazov. In fact, not Sherazov, uh, Bergman, who's now uh, fifth in the World Cup standing. So uh, one or two changes there. Last few minutes of preparation before they get underway. Just under two minutes to go. So time to make sure that the rifle, the skis have been checked. The warm-ups have been completed. The rifles have been zeroed. And it's uh, business as usual. Staffan Eklund, who will be uh, watching on over the Swedish targets. In particular, he'll keep a close eye on uh, Bergman. In fact, Bergman, the only Swede who is racing today. So he hasn't got too much work to do. Perhaps an opportunity to watch some of the other stars as they shoot. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back in time for the start. Fort Kent in the USA, the northeast corner of uh, America, hosting round eight of the Biathlon World Cups, just a few moments away from the start of the men's mass start. Now, this is only the third mass start of the season, and uh, a total of five mass starts counting towards that trophy at the end of the year. So, absolutely vital that everyone counts. No uh, no subtractions at the end of the season. Mikhail Schlesinger, a man who has come to good form in the last couple of weeks. Let's hope he can keep it going all the way through the middle of March and uh, excel in the World Championships as he did back in 2007. Bergman, I've already mentioned, with that uh, black tape on looking pretty evil as he starts today's run. And Martin Foucault, his shooting's good, his skiing's good. He has to be one of the favourites, but he's got to beat the two men on his right. Svensson is one of them, who's been on sensational form here. Two wins in succession, going for three. And Terry Bo, well, he may not be winning races at the moment but it's pretty tough to get him out of the top four and he leads the World Cup standings by 63 points at the moment on their marks the distance 15 kilometers four shoots in all five laps of three kilometers away they go well, look for a good start from Martin Foucault in the black and yellow of the French suit. He's uh, two for a three from the left as you look at the picture, but it's his teammate who has stolen a march on the rest. Very good start from, uh, I think that must be Alexi Berth who's moved up. Number 21 going through, Louis Abert has got a good start as well. So the French are obviously deciding that they want to get to the front and control the pace, but they've uh, 
been beaten to it. I think that might be Yakov Fak of Slovenia who's got himself up the front. We'll check up on that in just a moment. Not too many teams skiing in purple at the moment. It is Yakov Fak, and uh, he's had a good season so far this year. 16th in the World Cup standings, but he's just showing a little bit more maturity when it comes to the standing shoot. And remember that he's taken medals at both the last World Championships and the last Olympic Games. And so he will be a danger man in Hianti Manzisk. Not such a good start for number 12. That's uh, Maxim Shudov. And right at the back, Maxim Maximov, I think that must be. He started with bib number 29. Runa Bratsven with bib number 30. And the five form skiers or biathletes that have got themselves an entry today. Danny Boehm, Julian Eberhardt, Beatrix of France, Maxim Maximov of Russia, and then Bratsven, as I've mentioned, number 30. So they've, uh, they've all been performing well over the last uh, three days and earned themselves uh, a right to the entry on that basis. Terry Yabo just uh, held up slightly, but behind... Uh, Emil Hegler Svensson. That's one of the problems with this pack skiing is if you're not in the front three, you get caught in uh, a concertina effect and you get slowed at the bottom of the hills because you have to brake. And then, of course, uh, the guys at the front are accelerating away up the hill and then you have to accelerate even harder. So the best place to be is third or fourth in the line. Take the benefit of someone breaking the wind, taking the wind in the front, but uh, also you don't have to uh, accelerate and decelerate as much as those who are at the back of the pack. France with a good chance of taking the win today. Alexi Berth wearing bib number eight. We've got Martin Foucard, who you know all about. What a sensational season he's had. The Olympic silver medalist. He's uh, leading the Mass Start World Cup standings at the moment after two races. Now, just to uh, update you on the last two races, the first one was in Oberhof some time ago. Windy conditions there. Bo, Svensson, Sheresov, the top three on that occasion. Uh, notable factors from that race, only one man shot clear. That was Alexi Berth, who is uh, racing ag again today, wearing eight. And only four men shot 19 out of 20. Now, that was uh, not unusual. In Antolz, no one shot the perfect 20 out of 20. Two hit 19, that was for Card again and Mesetic, and then five hit 18 out of 20. So, in this mass start format, hitting all the targets is not so essential if you want to win the race. But I think uh, today, any less than 18, and you're going to be struggling to be standing on the top of the podium. We'll see. Svensson certainly proving uh, us wrong in the sprint three days ago by winning with uh, one missed target. Just, it was close, but uh, gone are the days certainly where you can miss uh, two. In fact, to win a race, you really do need to hit 90% of the targets, and that's something that's gone up year by year. And the women's tour, every bit as competitive. Neuner Gussner, of course, uh, the two fastest skiers on the women's tour at the moment. They'll be in action a little later on. Four thirty-three on the clock. Just to uh, let you know, the sort of time we're expecting this race to be won in certainly under forty minutes. The uh, slowest of the mass start victories we had this year, thirty-nine fifty-one. That was in Oberhof, but uh, that was really tricky conditions, high wind as well. Lots of penalty loops skied on that day. Uh, we haven't quite got down under the thirty-five-minute marker. Thirty-five fifty-one. 35-33, the time from Martin Foucard in Antolz in Italy, the last of the mass starts, and that was fairly similar to the Olympic winning time by Yevgeny Ustigov of uh, Russia, who shot clear on that occasion. That was a phenomenal performance out in uh, Vancouver. Whistler Olympic Park, the venue for the biathlon races last year out at the Olympic Games. 
I oh, certainly hope that that uh, facility is well used. A little bit out in the woods, so to speak, but unbelievable tracks. All cut into a very confined area. Fat goes through the 2.2 kilometres with a slim lead. for Card in uh, third place at the moment. Bo and Svensson well placed in four and five. Carl Johan Bergman in six. Lessinger is not going to miss out on a trick uh, in the early stages. He's well placed in the top ten at the moment. None of the big names fading away at this stage, but uh, certainly an advantage to be in that front group of five coming into the first shoot. Well, it seems that the Vuvuzelas have made their way from South Africa to uh, northeast of the United States. Uh, now, if you want to check out where we are on the Atlas, just uh, go right to the top. Uh, there's a little peninsula of the states that sticks out into Canada and Fort Kent on the very northern aspect of that. Just uh, a couple of snowballs uh, throws away from the Canadian border and uh, a high percentage of the uh, population here speak French, or can speak French, I should say. Absolutely stunning area. Mile upon mile of birch forests. And uh, nice to see a good crowd turning out. We were last here back in 2004, and they had over 10,000 spectators uh, through the stadium on that occasion. Now, one of the great features about the racing here, and in fact in uh, Presqu'île, is the, the compactness of the uh, stadium design. So the crowd are very, very close to the action and get a great view of what's going on. So, first shoot of four in the prone position, and they take the lane that corresponds to the bib number. So. We have Bo in lane one, Svensson two, Foucault of France in three, Carl Johan Bowman of Sweden four, lane five is Lukas Hoffer, and Michael Schlesinger down in lane six. Watch for the yellow flashes that indicate a miss, and in course, uh, of course, incur a penalty loop of 150 metres. Bo taking his time, Svensson just taking it steady as well, but gets five out of five. Terry Bo, five out of five, Foucault the same, Bowman the same. Hoffer, can he clear five? He's taking his time today, he does. So away goes the Italian, Sednev, Sikora, Oss, all perfect shooting. But Michael Schlesinger, one of the big victims on shoot number one. Shoot off misses two. Well, that's a disaster for Maxim Shudov. He's going to struggle to come back from that. He's not going to have too much company for the skiing on the second loop. Let's have a look and see where the shots of Terrier Bow have gone. That was a little bit lucky. Split round on the left-hand side. Difficult call for the coaches. So you had a couple in the centre, one on the right, two on the left. And uh, so I guess they'll just say <laughs> what they do with the sights. Well, they may just shift it to the right a little bit. That would be the safe option. But it might involve Terrier Bow just aiming off rather than adjusting the sights. On the other hand, they might say, well, they've all gone down. We'll leave it at that. But it was very, very close indeed. Vincent Che moving up through the order. Nice performance from him so far. In front. The French are well represented in the front of the field. Louis Arbert, number 21, also uh, not far off the pace of the leaders. This likes, looks like Schlesinger, who's trying to gain, uh, having made two mistakes on that first shoot, started uh, with bib number six. So he's right off the pace at the moment. A lot of work to do on this second lap, and that will cost him later on. But uh, I guess you have to make a decision. Do you just take your time and hope that the leaders make mistakes, or do you make the effort and make up for your mistakes uh, in the shooting range? Difficult call. Nothing comes for free, and speed on the skis is no exception. You pay the price later on. Svensson 
just a couple of seconds off the leaders. Bergman, Mac Makaviv, Hoffer, Sednev, Sukup, Maximov, Vinda, Shikora, all up there. So, a fantastic race after just a 24 hours after the closest race that uh, we've seen in the last decade. Photo finish for the men's race yesterday, and uh, if you didn't hear us uh, confirm the result, it was Svensson who was given the shout ahead of uh, Martin Fourcard. So Svensson picking up the 60 points, 54 points to Martin Fourcard, and uh, they were given exactly the same time. He <laughs> would have thought that uh, they could have shared the uh, 60 points. But that's not the way. The money and the points going to Emil Hegler Svensson, his fifth victory of the season. Forcard wearing three will want revenge. And uh, another good race here from Forcard certainly will make him odds on favourite to win the Mass Start World Cup come the end of the season. And I tell you what, he certainly hasn't given up hope of winning the overall. Terry Bow, maybe 63 points clear, but he's only got to have one race where. He either doesn't finish in the top 40 or one race where he decides not to start because he's not well. And uh, that will change the whole shape of the World Cup standing table. Now, that corner could cause problems later on. You can see it's nice and firm on the inside, but if you drift more than a metre and a half to the uh, outside, some very soft snow indeed. And the chance of the ski getting caught, the ski tip just getting caught, is uh, quite high. Everyone managing in the front group. Problems could come if they're very tightly packed and the guys behind don't see exactly what is coming up. Well, you can still hear that uh, temperature pretty cold from the uh, sound of the ski poles. It does make the skis glide just that little bit slower. We've explained uh, a number of times that the colder it is, the, the, the more brittle the uh, actual snow crystals. So it's like running over needles as opposed to gliding over crystals that just soften and don't cause so much friction. You can prepare the skis specifically for it. They'll have nice smooth bases today. No rills cut in the base, which are patterns. The, uh, the actual shape of the cut on the bottom, a bit like a, a car tire. As it warms up, there's obviously more moisture in the snow, and you want to get that to the side of the ski as quickly as possible. At minus 18. Doesn't matter how much pressure they put on the ski, they're not going to get it to melt. Wearing 11, Vincent J in that front group. Just get a feeling the French are going to come out on top today. I don't know what it is. Uh, they're there in numbers. And uh, certainly Martin Foucault is uh, a form performer at the moment. There's Yakov back leading the second lap as he did the first, but uh, he's not pushing the pace too hard. Everyone else, though, happy with it and uh, quite uh, prepared just to sit in behind and only five seconds separating the top 14 skiers at the moment. This is an extraordinary tight race. I know there's only one shoot of the four completed so far, but so often we have a group of five, five or six who get away after the pr first prone shoot. And that's largely because there's a bit of a panic going on as they come into the range for the first time, but not the case today. Well, Martin Foucault has his supporters and the French uh, certainly well supported out here. The Canadians will be disappointed that none of their men have qualified. The USA, well, Lau Bailey is in. He's wearing bib number 25 and uh, he's the only of the only one of the American team being represented. So uh, not a brilliant performance. Jay Hakkinen's been racing, but not on his best form at the moment, which is a little bit of a worry. Yakov Fak just slows it down as they come in towards the range for the second time in the prone position. Again, no real change in the wind conditions, but 
It's uh, been noticeable that one or two gusts coming out of nowhere. If it comes, then they've all got exactly the same conditions. Interesting email coming in from Andre saying uh, in the sprint and the individual race, where of course it's a time trial format, why don't the best skiers all start last in the last group, just like they do in the Cross Country World Cup, uh, incidentally, just so the race builds to a climax? I'll uh, let you ponder on that one for a while, and then uh, perhaps we'll discuss it on loop number three. So Fack moves from lane 10 up into lane number one. A little bit slower to get the first round away because he's had to ski further. Martin Foucard rattling through the targets. Bergman of Sweden, 20 out of 20 yesterday. 10 out of 10 so far today. Good shooting from him. Bo is clear. Spenson with his first miss of the day. He's going to have to start a ski just that little bit faster. Lukas Hoffer has gone clear for Italy. That's uh, one of his best performances in the prone so far this year. Can he keep that sort of form when it comes to the stand? Let's hope so. Shakura, five out of five. Bad misses from Vega. Vindish also has gone wide with three. Eberhard of Austria, two wide. Bratsven of Norway has missed one. So he'll be 25 seconds at least off the pace. And uh, nice to see Schlesinger of the Czech Republic has gone clear yet again. He's having a brilliant couple of weeks. Svensson, the lap completed, 22 seconds to make up. Keep an eye on him as he goes round this third lap. This is Jakob Fack. Well, apart from that last shot, now, if that was a split round, I'm not sure whether we got a rebound. Must have been a split round. In fact, I don't see how a rebound would have hit the outside of the target. So Fack... Uh, just a little bit fortunate to still be with the leaders after that close shot. But uh, the crucial thing is that all the targets have gone down. Number seven going through from uh, Ukraine is Sergei Sednev, man who's been on pretty good form so far this week. We've got Christoph Stefan wearing 18. There's the sole American, Lau Bailey. Well, Fulcard must be enjoying this season. He can't seem to do uh, anything wrong. His older brother, Simon, not racing today. He's not 100%. Uh, just uh, as I mentioned, with uh, Cherizov and Ada pulling out, both of them just feeling tired. No, no real illness, but it's getting so close to the World Championships that they just don't want to take any risks at this stage. And uh, in 10 days... This is the sixth race out here in the States. It's a really brutal program. I can't think of many other endurance uh, sports where they will race this often. The only saving grace is that the uh, cross-country skiing is actually very, very kind on the, the limbs and the, or the joints and the muscles. There's no impact whatsoever. So you don't do the damage that you certainly do if you do a, a fell race or a mountain race. And even uh, road running will leave you in a much worse state than uh, a 20 kilometer ski. Everyone's starting to improve on their line around that left hand turn, just starting a little bit wider, cutting it fine, avoiding the soft snow on the outside. And what a fantastic lead group we have. It's Martin Foucard, the Mass Start World Cup leader, who is leading the way at the moment. So they approach the range for the third time. Now, of course, this is in the standing position. This is when the front group will certainly break down. And the pace is now being pushed. Carl Johan Bergman, supremely confident with his shooting, just decides that uh, it's time to do some damage on the chasing group and I think what they're trying to do is to prevent Svensson gaining ground Svensson of course a miss on shoot two he's only one shot behind which uh, at the moment is around 20 seconds I must apologize we have a timing uh, computer in the commentary box <laughs> I think it's objecting to the cold it's uh, just not functioning today so we're not picking up on all the intermediate times.
Well, that is exactly what you want on the side of the tracks. A massive support, and the more support, the easier it is to push the pace. That was uh, Andre Makaviv wearing 17, and uh, he's got a little bit of work to do. Sednev goes through. Brad Sven has uh, dropped off for the Norwegians. Jakob Fack uh, suddenly finds that uh, they're not happy with the pace that he's been setting. And it's Bergman now who is just pushing on. Martin Foucault deciding that he's got to go with it. Number one, Terry Bow is still there. What a sensational season it's been for Terry Bow. He, was, uh, he comes from Struun originally, born in Struun, which is on the northwest, I guess, of that bulb at the bottom of Norway. Beautiful area, not far from Sonja Fjord, which uh, I guess many of you see. If you, any of you have got a, a Norwegian uh, calendar, <laughs> it's generally on page one or two. And, uh, of course, famous for its glacier skiing as well. And uh, other famous sportsmen that have come from that uh, part of the world. To Andre Flo, footballer for Chelsea in the past. Now, of course, Terry Beau relocated to Lillehammer using the Olympic facilities from 1994. And, of course, with uh, training partners like Carl Johan Bergman of Sweden. Well, here comes Svensson doing the work in the chasing group. He's taken... Christoph Suman with him of Austria, who's also had one miss today. Now, have a look at this, how tight it is. 21.59, going through 8.2 kilometres. Remember, it's 15 kilometres in total. And um, we have 11 skiers in that front group. At the back of the group at the moment is Thomas Sikora of Poland. Now, the Poles have had real problems with uh, their coach over the last uh, season or so. Nice to see Shikora in there. I'm sure it's had a bad effect on the way that he's been training and performing. Now, this is when the nerves start to build, not only in the athletes, uh, they don't really have too much time to think about it, but certainly amongst the coaches, because they know this first standing shoot is always a critical phase. That's Alexander Oss, the bearded Oss, making his way through. It's nice to see that he's having a couple of good results. He's just been slowly slipping down the World Cup order, all the way down in 26th place at the moment. And Oss really does need a couple of good runs to get himself uh, into a position to claim a place in the Norwegian relay team. I'm pretty sure he's going to be on the plane out to Chianti Manzis. He's uh, a useful man to have around, but his skiing slightly lost form. The shooting's been somewhat erratic. And when you've got men like Bo, Svensson, Bjorndalen in the team, it's pretty difficult to claim a place in the relay by right. Sednef now, Svensson, 22 seconds down at the start of this third lap or fourth lap I should say he now of course uh, has got himself just 12 and a half seconds off the pace of the leaders and he's coming quite quick so he's probably cut that down to under 10 seconds and could well move himself back up into the top five now Bergman has hit 30 of his last 30 shots can he make it 35 out of 35 It's a lovely, steady position from Bergman. Still a little bit of movement in the rifle. Impossible to hold it still. Five out of five again. Oh, what sensational shooting from him. A mistake from Madame Foucault. In fact, two from Foucault. He's in trouble. Hoffer with two misses after going 10 out of 10 in the prone. Thomas Shakur has gone clear. Sednev of Ukraine is there. And nice to see Christoph Suman back on form and back on target. The Austrian going out in the top four, certainly. And Jakob Fack has hit 15 out of 15. Sensational run from him. Can he hold it? together usually the last shoot is where it starts to go wrong but this is nice to see him doing so well at this stage Terry Bow, 19 seconds down and uh, work to do for the Norwegian but I certainly wouldn't put any money on him not finishing on the podium today because he's only 19 seconds off the pace it can all change on that last shoot so from uh, having 11 in the leading group we now have uh, 15 seconds separating the top four and it's a, a chance, maybe, for Bergman to start 
and apply the pressure, make those behind him suffer. Birnbacker, 33 seconds down. Lindstrom, just over 35 seconds to gain. I have to apologise to the Swedes. I said uh, Bergman was the only one. Freddie Lindstrom, wearing bib number 24, gets in uh, as a last-minute call. Really got in because uh, Sherazov and Ada withdrew from the race uh, at the last minute, deciding this morning that they were too tired. I wonder what it is when you wake up and just say, no, I don't feel like racing. Not a good habit to get into, but uh, sensible at this stage of the season. Martin Foucard now 41. He's got a bit of work to do if he wants to get back on the podium. It's been an unbelievable run of form from the young Frenchman. So one more shoot to go and then one more three kilometre lap to ski. Perhaps another good opportunity to chat about the starts in the uh, in the sprints and the individual. There was an email from uh, Andre in particular saying, why don't they put the uh, best skiers last like they do in the cross country? And uh, just so we it keeps the race alive. Well, one of the main reasons they don't do it is because it makes it very, very difficult for the, uh, the TV director to follow all the right people. I think uh, I can see their point, but after the first shoot, things usually sort themselves out. I don't doubt for a second that uh, on the very first shoot of the race, they will miss one or two of the leaders. But uh, as the race goes on, certainly by the halfway stage, you're pretty much sure of who's in contention for a win and who isn't. So uh, I don't think that argument holds completely. And the other reason that they don't do it is because they see the uh, choice of starting position. Of course, there are four groups, and you can put your athlete in each group as we see them go through 9.7. And uh, it's an art to know where the quicker skiing conditions are going to be. Certainly, it would be fairer if all the top seeds went off in the final group. But uh, there are many reasons, and uh, I think they also feel, like in many sports, that the best should have the best conditions. And if the best conditions are early on, then that's when the best should be starting. I'm not sure I go with that. I think uh, it's most important to make it a good event and uh, make it some exciting viewing. Interest to have your thoughts on that. Do keep the emails coming in, and particularly during the World Championships. Let us know who you think is going to be uh, walking away with the world titles. Biathlon.eurosport at yahoo.co.uk. Now, I wonder where your money is for this particular race. Thomas Shakura looking better than he has done all season. Carl Johan Bergman is still up there and must be one of the favourites. Svensson, very, very solid yet again for Norway. And Terry Boat not far off the pe pace uh, either. Sednef competitive. There's Bo with the yellow bib at the back. Christoph Suman wearing bib number nine, yet to get on the podium this year. Christoph Suman, he's a very, very strong skier when he's on form, but he's uh, he struggled ever since Osterson. Just wasn't 100%. Perhaps it was that uh, the health problem that uh, a lot of the teams suffered from in Sweden. Max Cobb involved with the IBU, enjoying having the World Cup events on his uh, home snow and what a great job they've done to get these events organized and so good to see so many spectators turning up to watch a little bit sparse out on the tracks but uh, that's always the way most uh, people are attracted to the range area where so many of the changes take place chilly day's work for the coach minus 18 at the start it's uh, warmed up three degrees minus 15 at the moment Well, having put my money on the French uh, coming through to succeed today, of course, we've seen Martin Foucault. He's missed two on shoot number three, so he needs to go five out of five and very quickly. And, of course, hope that one of these three men or all three men at the front make mistakes. Terry Bow in no man's land at the moment, trying to close the gap between the uh, second group and the lead group. Uh, it's uh, a risky tactic from Terry Bow. He needs to save something for the last loop, whatever happens. We've already seen twice in the last couple of weeks that Svensson is very, very difficult to beat. Martin Fulcard came close. My goodness, he came close. Just uh, half a centimetre in it. 
30.18 on the clock. Just under four kilometers to go, but crucially, there are still five more targets to be hit. And if you don't hit all five, you will not win today. I cannot believe that the top six are all going to miss uh, a target. Bergman, can he go 40 out of 40 and claim the victory? Certainly, he deserves to uh, get a win. Bjorn Ferry, of course, the only Swede to have won so far this year. Not racing here in Fort Kent. So losing ground in the World Cup standings, but perhaps improving his chances of taking a win at the World Championships. Now, 29 seconds separating the top nine. These men, I think really the best they can hope for is a top five or six and hope that the pressure at the front is too much. They've got nothing to lose here in this position. They can afford to go into rapid fire on the final shoot. Number 17, that's uh, Andre Makaviv going through for Russia. Maximov also racing for Russia. Sherazov, the only, uh, only one of the big names in the Russian team to have withdrawn. Now, will it be Svensson? Will it be Thomas Shakura, who's uh, got a slightly confusing suit? From the back, he looks like a Norwegian. From the front, he looks like a pole. There he is wearing 15. And Carl Johan Bergman, who's offered no contribution to the lead on this last lap, quite happy to sit there in third place, and wisely so. I think that shows that he's pretty confident in his shooting ability. As Helena Ekholm loses form, Carl Johan Bergman has gained it. Well, that camera needs to move because Eklund has work to do to see exactly where Carl Johan's shots go. Svensson with a chance to close the gap down at the top of the World Cup standings. He could get it to within 50 points come the end of today. Slight breeze picking up from the left. They need to be aware of that. And Bergman misses his first one. A chance now for Shikora to come through and take the win. He's going to have to ski some. He has to hit the last two to be sure of getting out ahead of Svensson, who's missed two. Five out of five for Thomas Shikora. Bo has missed as well. Now a chance for Martin Foucault, but he's got to be rapid if he wants to move into the top position today. Shakura is away. It's going to be a gap of at least 12 seconds. Down it goes for Martin Foucault. Bernbacher of Germany could come out in second place. There will be a chasing group. It is not in the bag quite yet for Thomas Shakura, but what a sensational shoot from the pole. 20 out of 20 for the day, 32.59 on the clock. He has 3,000 metres to hold on to that lead of 11 seconds. We're going to find out exactly what sort of form he's on. Bo has moved ahead of Svensson and Bergman. Well, both Svensson and Bergman getting their first round away very, very quickly. Certainly a couple of seconds faster than usual. That might be what unsettled them, and both of them putting that first round wide. Boehm has moved up in the fifth. Best of the Germans at the moment. Alexander Oss, this is going to be one of his best results for a while, and there's evidence that Alexander Oss, after looking very, very tired in Antolz, is starting to come back to form. A move from Martin Foucault. Again, he has to put the pace on on the last lap, and the reason that Foucault has gone is number one. It's Terry Abo who is putting up the chase. Here comes Alexander Oss. Came out in sixth. He's moving up into fifth place ahead of Danny Boom. Wow, look at this. And a great run. Lukas Hoffer, best shooting we've seen from him so far this season. Now we've got to see if he can repeat the sort of ski form that he showed us in Italy three weeks ago. Well, where is your money? Is it going to be another famous win for Thomas Shikora? It's been a long, long wait. But uh, don't forget, I'm just going to check when he had his first win. It was either 94 or 95. So uh, 15 years ago, it is quite a phenomenal span for a man to be at the top of his game. He's not there every week, that's for sure. But when he is on form, he is uh, devastatingly good. Great to see him doing so well. And it's the sort of good news that the Polish team need. Hopefully that will uh, cause uh, 
will just stir the women's team and they'll uh, start doing what we know they are capable of. 11 seconds has now been cut to 6.7. They still have a long way to go. 2,300 metres. It looks as though Martin Foucault might deny the pole, but uh, I think it could come down to a sprint for the second day in succession. Shakura's first win. 1995 in Antolt's Antiselva. That, of course, was a world title he, that he won. Well, at the age of 37, he is still going strong. Terry Abo has caught Danny Bohm of uh, Germany. Alexander Oss still on the chase. Uh, it's going to be a good result for Alexander Oss. That's uh, without doubt. But as I mentioned earlier, he's been slipping down the World Cup standing. So this is just the sort of result he needs. And just proving today that he can shoot under pressure. And that's exactly what the coaches are looking for. And that's exactly what they need for that Norwegian relay team. Well, there's no doubt that Terry Abo is going to feature in the Norwegian relay. And my goodness, they are putting up a chase. Sikora is certainly going to have to work hard. And the 11 seconds has now been cut to less than 11 metres. Brilliant work from Martin Fourcard, but Fourcard is going to have to watch out because Terry Abo is pushing and pushing and pushing. What a brilliant run from him. Danny Boehm down in the... Started with bib number 26. Only got into this race because of his form here in Fort Kent, and he's certainly justified that today. What is going through this man's mind? Brilliant shooting. Perfect shooting. But still, the victory is not confirmed. Now, remember, Martin Foucard missed two shots on that third shoot. At that stage, uh, <laughs> I, for one, certainly thought he was out of contention for a podium finish, but he shot fast and he shot clear on that last shoot, having skied so hard on the penultimate lap that uh, he's put himself in contention. Has he got anything left? It's quite incredible, the sort of form that this man is showing. Well, here goes Martin Foucault. On comes the sprint. Thomas Shakura needs to respond. He's got to get in behind the Frenchman, but it's going to be tough because Foucault is pushing and pushing. Oh, the legs of Thomas Shakura looking a little bit wobbly. Well, the French team just getting news that their man has gone in front and uh, he, keep, he needs to keep the pressure on because we've already seen the Norwegians who are chasing hard. Now, can Shakura stay there long enough? 800 metres to go. He needs some support out there. I'm not convinced that Shakura has skis running at the same speed as Martin Foucault. And uh, closing up the gap now, less than 20 metres from second back to third. Danny Bohm looking dangerous, good skiing from him. In fact, uh, apologies, Danny Bohm has uh, dropped back in a sixth place and it's Andy Birnbacker now in a position to challenge for a podium finish today. And as they come towards the stadium, 14.2 kilometres completed, 800 metres now exactly to go. And the clock is on. Let's see what the margin is between second and third. Should be less than seven seconds. Oh, it's 7.2 and Bo still has a lot of work to do. Birnbacker's got to stay strong if he wants to feature in the top three today. Well, it's going to be another wonderful result from uh, Terry Abo. He's done enough to uh, maintain the lead. And with Svensson dropping off the pace with misses on that last shoot, well, look at the damage that uh, Martin Foucault, he put on a burst to go past Shakura. That didn't work, but he's put another burst on that last little climb. And he's now got himself a gap of some 20 metres. And Shakura is going to have to work hard to defend second place now. So close to taking his first victory not in his career, of course, but uh, the last win from Thomas Shakura coming in the, 90, the uh, 2009 season. That was in Ostersund, a pursuit. He has won a mass start before, but uh, it now looks as though it is not going to be today for Thomas Shakura. Top three certainly is uh, going to be a result that he would have settled for at the start of the day. For Card, 50 metres to go, and having been denied yesterday, he gets his revenge over the Norwegians.
Another tight final lap, but no photo finish. It's victory for Martin Foucault, another 60 World Cup points, and he closes down on Svensson and Terry Bow. Terry Bow holding on to third, Burnback and nothing left in the tank to put in a sprint, a final sprint, to get himself on the podium. And Shakura, well, second is fantastic, but he so desperately wanted the win. It would have been his fifth win in his career. And remember that first one coming all the way back in 95. Minor placings are important. And Alexander Ost punches the air because fifth place is brilliant. Lindstrom just uh, involved in a photo finish with Svensson, who limits the damage on the World Cup standings. But he will lose ground to Terry Bow, who will move to approximately 70 points clear at the start of the World Championship. So all to play for in the closing stage of the season this of course is race 19 out of 26 so six races to go with world cup points to be won and uh, only 70 points separating the top two remember 60 points in each so uh, it still really only requires terry Bow to miss a race or to uh, have a disaster on the range and things could change so quickly but martin Foucault is still in a very dangerous position he started today with 664, he moves on to 724. Still uh, about 100 points behind the leaders, but definitely threatening. Schlesinger led early on, down into 13th place. Stefan down in 14 today. Christoph Suman, who was in a strong position after the two prone shoots, drops all the way down to 17th. And Yakov Fak, who led the first lap, he led the second lap all the way down in 16th. Little replay of the overtaking maneuver from Martin Foucault. He is on unbelievable form, and the French have yet another victory to celebrate. The Russians won't be so pleased with the way things have gone. Maximov and Makaviv in 18th and 19th position. The shooting just needs to be tidied up. This must be Brad Sven of Norway coming in in 20th position. Jean-Guillaume Bithix. He's been on good form this week, but unable to compete. Uh, 21, only 2 minutes 26. Now, most of the mass start races, the difference between 1st and 30th, for some reason, always comes in within 10 seconds of the four-minute marker. We might be able to improve on that today. Slightly closer race generally uh, implies that the race course is not as tough as uh, some of the others. 26, and we have 2.54 on the clock. Marcus Vindish, not uh, such a good performance for him, but the Italians will be celebrating because Lukas Hoffer has produced a really wonderful run. He's got himself some very good World Cup points. He needs them. He was in danger of dropping out of the top 10 of the World Cup standings. 23rd in the sprint, 36th in the pursuit. Lukas Hoffer's got himself in the top 10 today. Big boost for the French team at just the right point of the season. If there's any team out on the World Cup that really benefit from a victory, it is the French because they're a closely knit group, men and women. They, they live in uh, close quarters, and uh, when one of them has a victory, certainly you can see the party mood, but you can see the response the next day when it comes to racing and training. It's something that they thrive on. Eberhardt, 346 behind, and number 30, Shoot off 351. Again, the margin within 10 seconds of that four minute marker. Not quite sure why it keeps happening, but time and time again, that is the gap between first and 30th in the mass start. Of course, only 30 allowed to start. The man on top today is uh, Francis Martin Fourcard. And just to give you some idea of uh, how strong he's been in the last couple of weeks, looking at his last six results now, he's had two wins, two seconds, a fourth and a seventh and in a in an event that uh, in, involves shooting and a little bit of fortune that is a phenomenal record to have shakura delighted with his second place good to see him back on that sort of form another 30 seconds on his skiing speed and he will be a gold medal contender when we head to chianti manzisk in the world championships bergman fading in the closing stages two misses on that last shoot ends up 57 points behind such a shame for him that he made mistakes on the last shoot and not the first one because then he would have had a chance to make up for it. 
Schlesinger, 13. Vincent J of France down in 24. And uh, Benjamin Vega, in because of his form, has to settle for 28th today. Well, what a fantastic race, and uh, nice to see Forcard, who was denied in the photo finish yesterday, actually clumps through to claim the victory today. The women's mass start later today, 18.15, that's European time, and another thriller coming up. Hope you join us for that. Goodbye for now.